Ancient legends say there's a man who has not seen sunlight in 26 years. Spoiler, it's me. Because my efforts to stay inside all day every day have failed, and now I have to take a vitamin D supplement to avoid looking like a Twilight cast member, I'm instead going to build a dwarven kingdom in my Minecraft world just to appease my inner vampire. You see, despite the fact that I've survived 3,500 days in this world, I don't really have a good method of storing items. For instance, I keep all of my wood here and here, and over here, a little bit over here, you get the point. But because I want this to be my end game Minecraft base, I think this is a great opportunity to finally do something about that. So when it comes to making this storage system, I have a couple of options. I could mine out the area, or I could blow it up. Ouch. Or I could just go ahead and build this. Now Brock, what is this fancy machine you have behind you? This is a tunnel bore. And as the name says, it makes tunnels, which is perfect because I will need space to store hundreds of chests here eventually. Now, if I just do this and then remove it, everything should be ready to go. And according to my calculations, I just need to click the note block and Yes, it works. It actually works. It worked for about 90 seconds. Hang on, it broke. Why did it break? Stupid, stupid, stupid gravel. I'm convinced that I have beginner's luck when it comes to redstone. This is what it feels like every time I make something complicated. It works perfect the first time, then immediately breaks for a really dumb reason, like I look at it funny, and then proceeds to taunt me for the next two hours while I try and fix it. Why doesn't it work, man? No, no. Oh, no. Oh, I hate my life. I'm done. I'm I'm simply done. We're just gonna we're gonna do the entire thing from scratch. There's no way I can mess it up now. After two hours of headache, I finally had the machine up and running. So I spent the next while babysitting it while I slowly cleared this massive tunnel. As I spent the rest of that day chipping away, filling in the floor and clearing away the ceiling where the machine missed some spots, I began to have my doubts. It was really boring pun not intended. So yes, while I am still going to work on the storage system from time to time, it won't be a primary focus on this video. With all that out of the way, it was time to start building. The custom biome that I had built in the last episode opened up some pretty interesting ideas about the overall safety of this area. So right away, I'm thinking we have a little bit of the floor is lava going on here, meaning that I think this green river is definitely toxic. And I think it'd be really cool if we could connect this area up with like a series of bridges. Yeah, I think something like this looks pretty good. I think we'll put one here. We'll do one right here. Maybe like right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely one here. Ooh, and for sure also definitely one on this area. Like there. Yeah, yeah, I like this. It turns out that simply using bridges wasn't really enough of an idea to spark much further creativity. So yeah, at this point, I still had no idea what the heck I was doing. So I began doing more research. I'm imagining a massive dwarven keep right here in the center of the storage system would look really cool. Firstly, we'll need a bunch of deep slate, and I have that pretty much covered thanks to the tunnel bore. That thing was awesome. I'm also going to need insane amounts of spruce wood for this project. Hold up. Wait, what am I even doing? To really build a proper dwarven kingdom, I realized it was in my best interest to limit my exposure to the sunlight, so I took this opportunity to move my tree farming setup down into the ground. We'll go through and outline a pillar right here, and then also one right here, followed by another archway on each side. Oh my god, you literally can't even see it right now, but just trust me, it'll look good. Ooh, who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? It's been a minute since we've had one of these, huh? I'm coming for you. <laughs> now at the top here, we'll go ahead and extend our pillars out and up a little bit further. Same thing over here. We'll connect them together. And then for at least a little bit of contrast through here, we'll go in with some glowstone, cover these up with spruce trap doors, and then fill in the rest with spruce. Ooh, yeah, I like that. That looks nice. Now, before I get too carried away building, I'm realizing now that I'm a little bit short on space here, so we got to clear out some room. Oh, that looks very weird right now.
So we're about one hour into building this and I think it's looking pretty good. The foundation is really starting to come together. Now the next thing to do is figure out a way to make this fit better into the terrain and make it seem like it's been here for a really long time. Getting the building to fit properly into the terrain was proving to be more difficult than I had anticipated. These dwarves do not have it easy, man. I'll tell you what. I have lots of newfound respect for their lifestyle. I mean, just the amount of sheer digging I was doing at this point was actually insane. At one point, I even gaslit myself into thinking the entire build needed to be pulled out by like three blocks, which, uh, yeah, wasn't my brightest idea. Two mildly infuriating hours later, and it looks like I did actually nothing. Despite all of that, there was still lots of work to do. Going through here with some deep slate walls, I think for the floor, we'll go ahead here and keep it very simple with the polished deep slate, followed by a series of more arches, which of course means more digging. This is my life now. I'm a dwarf in the mines. This is what the dwarves do. I'm a dwarf. I don't really know what's going to go in these rooms, if anything, so if you have any ideas, let me know. I have no idea what I just built, but it looks really cool, so I'm hereby calling these the Dwarven Symbols, I think. After four hours of building and going back through to add various doorways and windows for extra detail, the Dwarven Keep was finally complete. And right away, I was faced with a pretty big problem. But yeah, the deep slate doesn't really stick out from all of the deep slate in here. I know, I know what you're thinking. What a profound thing to say, but it was true. If I wanted to build this kingdom with deep slate as a primary building block, I needed the walls to be a different block. Now, if you've been following this base for a while, you know that I plan to cover the entire inside of this with oak wood. Luckily, I've been planning for this very moment for over a year when I built this tree farm. Let's do some math. Given the diameter of this circle is roughly 50 blocks, we can calculate that you'll need about 100 157 blocks to get all the way around. Multiply that by the height of this place, which is 54 blocks, we determine that we will need 8,478 oak logs. Alternatively, that is 132 stacks or five shulker boxes worth. So the first logical step in fixing this problem requires us to actually fix the storage system at our tree farm. What's wrong with it, you ask? Well, nothing's wrong with it, but it only has one chest, so we need to add some more. There we go, six more chests should do. Now the next problem is a much bigger one. Uh, yeah, this thing uses a lot of bone meal and we're doing okay, but not great. So for the first time in a year, I set off to the mob farm that we built way back at the beginning of this series. And to my surprise, there were stacks upon stacks of bones there, meaning that the bone meal wasn't going to be much of a problem after all. Look at my little character go when I craft these bones. He's just flinging his arms. He's working so hard. He's doing so good. One shulker box of bone blocks later. My wrist physically hurts right now. I never thought I would actually be saying that. That's kind of embarrassing. Despite this, I was finally ready for a long AFK session over at the tree farm. Well, I will see you on the other side. Well, today should be fun. Like, how do I even go about placing in all of these oak logs? I guess I just like start outlining. I really don't even know what the best way to do this is. It's kind of a weird problem to have because if I just build like this and make things extremely uniform, the whole thing begins to look very flat and honestly unnatural. Maybe we can go through like this and kind of outline as we go at various heights. Okay, um, I can, I can work with this. So we're about 30 minutes in. And honestly, I think it's looking pretty good so far. Now I gotta figure out how to fill in these gaps. It's kind of hard because I can't just place the blocks like I normally would. I keep bumping my head. Um, yeah, not sure what to do about that. One hour in and we have all of this done. Not bad. Two hours in, and the motto is build now, think later. I'm also terribly out of wood. Hour number three, and we are halfway done. I am honestly very surprised at how fast this whole process has been so far. We've went from an entire wall of gray to an entire wall of brown. That 
is progress. By now, I was starting to lose my mind and definitely running out of interesting things to say. So yeah, I put on a podcast and spent the next four hours filling in the other half of the wall. Along the way, I experimented with the first environmental detail of this area by trying my hand at building a custom waterfall, which I think looks pretty dang cool. But we're finally at the place with this project where we can go ahead and start getting buildings and structures put into the area. I do need to figure out what they're going to look like, though, because I don't know what a dwarven house looks like. So I did what any rational man would do in my situation. Hey Siri, what does a dwarven house look like? All jokes aside, I took this as an opportunity to experiment with AI technology. And using a program called Mid Journey, I was able to generate some pretty cool concept art. And look, if this upsets you or rubs you the wrong way, just know I'm trying to make a cool YouTube video and that's it. Anyways, with the concept art acquired and one hour of messing around in a creative world, I was able to get a pretty awesome mock-up build. So I have a design for the houses. And now I must figure out where to put said houses. It makes no sense. Somehow, I think it'll work though. We'll do a small house up here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe one like right here. Definitely one about right here. One up here, over here. We'll do like a little tall boy here at the bottom. Okay, so I'm realizing now that I'm gonna need to get some more colored wool out and start outlining other things beyond just the houses. With the plan in place, it was time to begin actually building. So I started things off building up the support beams. Even though technically this was one big house, think of it more like multiple small dungeons crammed together, kind of like my college dorm room. For instance, right here, just like imagine this as its own little house. I mean, after all, dwarves are just little guys. From there, I kept building, expanding the island to give myself a better base to build on and working my way up the build, starting with the roof trim. We'll do a building here, one on this side, and then and a tall boy in the middle. At this point though, building the house was the least of my worries. Please work! Come on! I'm gonna have a conniption. I'm gonna connipt. For the actual roofs themselves, I had the bright idea to cover them in moss, which not only looks organic to begin with, but allows me to go back through with bone meal and add a bunch of life to the area. Oh, come on. Tell me that does not look dwarven. You simply can't. That's a creeper. Okay. Yep. 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 I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. House number two is complete, or should I say houses number two is complete. It's very similar to this one, but it's also very different. I also am obsessed with these windows. They're so cute. Because the remaining houses were suspended into the air, I needed to change my process a little bit. Apparently the dwarves who built these houses didn't know that most blocks will just float here in the Minecraft world. But either way, I spent the next while building a series of support beams on the sides of the cave, followed by the remaining houses. Before long, I developed a new strategy, whereby instead of building the entire house at once, I first went through building each of the support beams, followed by the house structure, the roof, and then so on. And there you go, the houses are pretty much done. That was way faster than how I was doing it before. Now we need a way to connect the houses. As you can see here, I've dug this tunnel and I think we're gonna have some roots going through. So firstly here, we'll go ahead and clear out some space so I can actually think. If I had a dollar for every time I said that, I would be very rich. I figure now would be a good time to lean even heavier into the fantasy vibe, starting things off with a dark oak floor and filling in the walls with both red and brown mushrooms as well as their stems. Ooh, you know what? I I kind of like that. It looks pretty good. I'll be honest, I don't know if I love it, but I'm at the point now where I'm just going to kind of send it and hope that it looks good. There's one more tunnel dug out. There's a second tunnel dug, a third one, a fourth, and a fifth. Now I think with that, you should be able to walk between all of these upper houses just on the pathways themselves. At this point, I don't even care if the pathways are functional. Like this one, for example, is like way too steep to even actually walk up. As long as it looks like it's functional, that's all I care about. Collecting enough of the mushroom stem blocks was proving to be quite an annoyance at this point because each mushroom only gives you like seven stem blocks or something stupid. I am a dwarf and this is my home.
Now it was time to start asking the questions of what do dwarves actually do? Okay, so I think we can all agree that the main thing dwarves do is go mining. So let's build some mine shafts now, shall we? Okay, we'll start with some pillars, pretty standard. Maybe some slabs for the roof. Now the last thing to do is to make the inside actually look a little bit like a mine shaft. To begin, we'll just simply dig for a while. Oh, diamonds, nice. Now we'll go through and add these support pillars, dig out some of these tunnels as if they've been actually mined out a little bit. Carry along the ceiling, just like this. A couple lanterns here and there. Finally, we'll go through here with some rails and curve them all the way around to here. And then lastly, I think it'd be very fitting if we put a chest minecart in here that goes back and forth. And yeah, suddenly the whole area feels totally alive. You know what? We'll even put the diamonds back that we found. Boom, boom. There we go. And just like that, we have our first proper mine shaft complete. What are you doing, dude? Get out of there. Mine shaft number two is complete. I spent the remaining hours of that day going through building up each of the remaining mine shafts before digging out their interiors. It's actually kind of crazy to think that just a few weeks ago I was artificially blowing up this entire hole with TNT dupers, and now I'm actually down here building the kingdom. It's pretty crazy. For some odd reason, I'm out here making a mine shaft full of deep slate copper. Not really sure why I'm using this stuff. It's actually very rare. These dwarves be flexing, man. And the last mine shaft is finally complete. I am getting in the way of the minecart, so I'm gonna get down for now. After building a second nonsensical waterfall to piss off any civil engineers watching, I asked a pretty important question. What the heck do the dwarves even eat? I have no idea what a dwarf actually would eat. I think we should revisit the idea of using mushrooms. Hear me out, okay? Imagine like crop fields planted little rows of mushrooms down here. This was the perfect solution. Simple, on brand, and really easy for my lazy ass. Now it was time to tackle the giant pink elephant in the room, this upper section here. I'll be honest, I still had no idea what I was going to do up here, so I decided to trust my newly acquired dwarven instincts and just start digging. I guess in theory, if dwarves are doing all of this mining and collecting all of these resources and ores, they probably have a pretty good smelting setup. Before I could finish the furnace array, I first took a trip to the nether to collect not one, not two, but 50 buckets of lava. This is a pretty unique design from my pal Radical Elder that actually uses lava buckets as a fuel source. Which is cool because that is arguably the most dwarven sounding thing I have ever heard of. I'm not going to explain much more about the design beyond that, but if you're interested, go watch his video. It's great. So the farm is pretty much done in terms of its function. Uh, now I need to just go ahead and figure out how the heck I'm going to to decorate this thing. Oh yeah, dude, this looks super cool. The one downside of this farm is that it takes a really long time to be ready for use. So in the meantime, let's get working on what I wanna build over here. Overall, this structure wasn't my favorite thing that I've built so far, but honestly, that's okay. I think it's important to remember that everything you build in Minecraft doesn't need to be better than your last or your favorite. I mean, that's just an unrealistic way of thinking. Mini motivational speech that nobody asked for aside, I now had a crazy idea for what to put in here. So yet again, I began digging. Oh my god, the beacon's here. It's off center by one block. You cannot make this up. Before long, I had an extremely long tunnel. And at the end of this really long tunnel, we will place in another portal. Let me explain. So basically in the last episode, when I improved the creeper farm, I rendered my other old nether portal completely useless. And as a result, I don't really have a good way of getting to and from the nether right now. This will solve that. However, it does mean it has to be a very long ways away from everything in order to not interfere with the creeper farm. With some space finally cleared out, I began laying down the foundation with a mix of lime wool and lime concrete. I even took an opportunity here to make my first ever set of Efficiency 5 shears. And boy oh boy does it feel nice, oh my goodness. Hey, 
Hey, you guys are like twinning. Did you guys coordinate this? Did you, did you plan it? All I'm gonna say is you know you were on that grind when you proceeded to record for the next six hours straight and not say a single word about what you were doing. I love how considerate the past me is towards the future me. Anyways, by now I had the floor covered in glass, these pillars along the walls, and even a massive bridge going through the center. But now is where I had some thinking to do. Now I've been pondering really hard what else to put in here. And I think I have an idea. Much like me ensuring that there's an even split of pizza rolls between my girlfriend and I, I get the idea that dwarves are very protective over their valuables. So I had the idea to turn that lower area into a vault of sorts. I spent the next couple of hours scraping together any pieces of ores I could find and collecting those, as well as taking a trip to the Mesa to steal a bunch of gold, because that sounded a lot more fun than AFKing at my gold farm. Okay, there's the coal done on all these sides. Next up will be the copper, and yes, it's going to age, but I really don't care. Now for the iron, which I totally mined myself and did not grab from my iron farm. From there came the gold, lapis, redstone, and finally the elusive diamond blocks. And no, I'm not using netherite here because I respect myself and my time. Now I have an idea here for the ceiling that I think will look pretty good. You see, there's a reason I built this particular super smelter. Apart from being really fast, it also doubles as a lava farm. And I can use that lava to hopefully add some really cool decorations here to the ceiling. I'm thinking like some sort of lava pipe system. It feels very industrial. And I like that. So I think if I, if I put this in here and then shut it, it should still flow out. And yes, there we go. That's a lava pipe. And I think that looks great. I'm still very obsessed with the idea of lava powering basically everything in this kingdom. It's just so on brand. In fact, I think most of what we built this episode was pretty thematic. I mean, yeah, we have houses, mine shafts, smelters, an entire vault. So yeah, it's safe to say I am never going outside again.